Hello and welcome to our knowledge field documentary on the century old genre, gothic fantasy. In this documentary I will define the genre, talk about early literature of the genre and explore many inspirational artists that have made a mark on the genre. Gothic fantasy is a genre that began in 1754 with the novel The Castle of Otranto, written by Horace Walpole. This novel did not only start a new genre, but it also helped mark the beginning of a series of novels to follow, such as Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and Bram Stoker's Dracula. Here is a timeline of some of the most iconic pieces of early Gothic fantasy literature. 1754, The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. 1818, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. 1859, The Woman in White by Robert Louis Stevenson. 1886, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Wilkie Collins. 1897, Dracula by... The Gothic fantasy genre follows the fear humans have of the unknown which goes back to the 1700s, which in other words, was a really, 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 really long time ago. In this time, science was not nearly as cool as it is today, which meant there was a lot more fear regarding what they could not explain, and imagination and superstition was left to fill in the gaps. Gothic fantasy provides a bridge from the past and the future, kind of acting as a sort of mysterious time machine. Even though science is a lot more advanced today, Gothic fantasy is still increasingly popular. This is because Gothic fantasy helps transport you to a time where everything was more mysterious and more people believed in the supernatural and the fear of not knowing. Early Gothic novels mostly feature a lot of talk of morality, philosophy and religion. The evil villains in these novels often acting as a sort of metaphor for a temptation the hero must overcome. The endings are also more often than not unhappy and whilst many of the early Gothic fantasy novels include romance, it is never the focus of the novel. The novels explore the battle between humanity and unnatural forces of evil, whether it's man-made or supernatural. Gothic novels take place in gloomy places which serve as a background for the mysterious circumstances. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is one of the most famous Gothic fantasy novels. The novel marks a shift in the Gothic fantasy genre by changing the typical Gothic villain from just an evil person or supernatural being into a physical embodiment of a human. Shelley uses mysterious circumstances in Frankenstein by having Victor Frankenstein create the monster. Shelley plays on the supernatural elements of raising the dead and research into untouched areas of science. Unknown to most readers, she also uses the technique of playing on the audience's fear of the unknown which helps identify as fitting within the genre. Her writing also causes us to question our views on Victor's use of the dead for scientific experiments. Dracula also marked a big milestone for the genre. Dracula is a story about a vampire. Count Dracula moves from his home, Transylvania to England, to search for victims of his undead curse. Professor Abraham van Helsing put together a group of men and women to combat them. After a long, tense time filled with horror, they succeed in destroying the menace. Instead of being tossed aside over the years and never read again, Dracula ended up becoming one of the classics, which is still read by loads of people today. This novel has been adapted into film, theatre and music. It has also birthed a new outlook of vampire culture. Dracula has become a character known worldwide, and even if you have not read the book, most people will know the name. Even though Bram Stoker did not invent vampire mythology, his novel more or less defined it. Stoker helped define the nature of the undead, such as vampires' fear of crucifixes, running water or garlic, and that it has no reflection in mirrors. Also, that they can turn into a bat, and by sucking a victim's blood, it will turn them into vampires too. These are all elements of vampirism that we see throughout vampire literature today, with little, if any, difference to that of Bram Stoker's Dracula. When thinking about fantastic Gothic fantasy filmmakers, one that springs to most minds is the eccentric Tim Burton, Tim Burton is an American film director, producer, writer and artist. He is best known for his gothic fantasy and horror films. He was born on the 25th of August 1958. His most famous film is Corpse Bride, which was released in 2005 and is a stop motion animation film. Corpse Bride follows the journey of a young man called Victor, who is taken to the underworld and married to a zombie whilst his real world fiancé is waiting for him in the normal world. Burton attended the California Institute of the Arts, and he later worked as an animator for Disney Productions. He directed his first feature film, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, in 1985, which turned out to be a box office success. Burton later established himself as an unconventional filmmaker, and turned to more mainstream films such as the big-budget Batman, 1989, and its sequel, Batman Returns, 1992. Both films became major hits. Burton has a very distinct director's trademark, 
which makes his work instantly recognisable to his fans. Almost all of his films are jam-packed with gothic imagery, from the characters themselves, to the props, to the house and cities where the film took place. They are exaggerated in an almost cartoonish way to emphasise the gothic features. In some of Burton's later films, he also uses CGI, computer-generated image, to exaggerate the impact of the visuals even more. An example of this is in Alice in Wonderland. The film has several characters which are generated using CGI, so that he could exaggerate their properties even more to emphasise the gothic setting. He also uses makeup and costume to highlight the peculiar gothic features. Nearly all of Burton's films focus on the main character that is some sort of outcast from society. This character is usually rather strange and eccentric. They're usually an outcast because no one understands them or their unusual quirks. Another one of Burton's signatures is repeating the same themes and ideas in many of his films. This is seen in his use of dark and light as contrast. The darkness goes well with his use of gothic imagery, but he uses the light to emphasise certain things. This technique is seen in Beetlejuice. When they show the house as daylight, it looks warm and inviting. However, inside it is darker gloomy. Burton also uses light and shadows in his film Sleepy Hollow to add to the tense atmosphere of the film. Another inspirational figure within the gothic fantasy genre is Caspar David Friedrich, who was a 19th century German romantic landscape painter. He was born September 5th, 1774 and died 7th of May in 1840. He was considered one of the best artists of his generation. Friedrich's paintings mainly centred around the contemplation of nature. Friedrich came of age at a time when society in Europe was beginning to have a newfound appreciation for spirituality. As we can see from his paintings, this had a big impact on his creative work. Friedrich's painting represents everything we see in gothic fantasy genre today. His paintings have also been an influence on many modern filmmakers. We can see similar pieces of his painting shown on film posters and film covers. Friedrich's painting plays on the ideas of nature and finding God in nature. Friedrich believed that nature had power. This is shown in his paintings with the use of fog and extreme weather. He was a man fascinated by the spiritual and supernatural and believed there are parts of nature that do not make sense and that added even more beauty to the nature he loved. His paintings tend to feature things like night skies, contemplative figures, morning mists, barren trees or gothic ruins. This is represented all through the gothic fantasy genre from the gothic settings and landscapes we see in films or even how they are described in literature. Many of his paintings, such as Wandering Above the Sea of Fog, reflect nature as being bigger than man and having an overwhelming power of its own, which is both beautiful and deadly. This idea is shown in many gothic fantasy films where the weather is a huge factor in creating the atmosphere and bringing the gothic elements to life and making a gothic setting like a castle look much gloomier and intimidating. All in all, Friedrich was an incredible landscape painter and his work should be known and appreciated by all of his gothic fantasy lovers as his work created some of the elements we love most about the genre and inspired our filmmakers even to this day. So that is the genre of gothic fantasy in a nutshell. I hope you are now informed of how the genre is defined and you can see where the imagery we see in the genre stemmed from. Thank you for joining me in the journey through gothic fantasy history.